Well, good afternoon, folks, or morning, wherever you might be uh, watching this from, but we'd like to welcome you to another Facebook Live session uh, here at Select Sires. Uh, my name's Kevin Jorgensen. I'm joined here today with my colleague, Rick Verbeek. Uh, glad that you could join us or watch it later. It's always fun for us to bring you up to speed of what happened this week in Sire Summaries. And it was a uh, marvelous, marvelous Sire Summary for Select Sires again in all product lines. And and I think you're really going to be excited to hear what we've got to say over the next uh, probably a little more than an hour, maybe, because we've got a lot of information to share with you today, folks. And, and it was just a, a lot of a lot of good, good information. And I thought about this morning. Rogan goes for three hours and not to say that we're anywhere near as entertaining as he is. But we are a little over an hour. It's OK. But with that, Rick, I'm going to let you tell everybody about how the day went uh, from an overall respect. Well, thanks, Kevin, and uh, hopefully we'll be a little less controversial than Rogan on some topics and uh, and certainly less than the three-hour mark, but I'm going to keep the introduction as brief as possible because we do have a lot of really exciting data that we don't want to share. Uh, I think this was a proof round that uh, was a extremely exciting for select sires and, and very critical for select sires with the number of bulls adding daughter information that have been you know, very influential uh, genetic material sire fathers for us, and we'll talk about those individually, but um, and I think, Kevin, you and I have said this was a proof round where uh, the genetic evaluations really lined up really nicely with the eyeball test that we've been seeing out on farms as we've walked pens and looked at cows and looked at daughters of bulls. Things just really lined up very, very nicely for us this time. So, you know, wh whatever ranking you're going to look at, whether it be proven bulls, high reliability bulls, genomic bulls, select sires is well positioned with our product lines to have some of the very best bulls available uh, to you, our clients. Um, you know, there weren't really many significant changes to the proofs, either statistically or from a modeling standpoint or in the rankings. If anything, things tended to go up, which we never say on proof week, it seems like. But, uh, you know, everything pretty well held or increased to a degree. As we go through uh, th this presentation, we're going to continue to focus on HHP dollars. And I think we'll finish up with a, with a uh, video regarding that. It is continuing to be our focus and we think the uh, selection index that best suits uh, the future needs for the, the broad spectrum of what we're trying to do and what breeders should be doing for, for, for profitable cattle. So you'll hear us continue to focus on HHP. Um, there was some uh, surprising news on Monday, uh, just kind of new breaking information as far as a new genetic defect in the industry uh, referred to as recumbency for the moment. Um, in simple terms, it, it, you could also refer to it as can't stand, where calves are born normally and lose the ability to stand up and function uh, over the course of time and, and eventually are lost. Um, so it is a condition that we are literally learning in real time. Uh, it seems like we get new results almost daily uh, as to who is free of this condition, who is carrier of this condition. We have our list of bulls that are tested. Uh, available on our website. So by all means, continue to check that as we get new results, they'll be posted on that, uh, that's on the website for you to monitor. Um, so uh, th there's probably going to be lots of questions about that. I can tell you, we are learning, literally learning as we go on a day to day basis. It's something I think we will uh, monitor. Uh, we've certainly will make some genetic decisions based on individuals in the future. It's probably very important to recognize, however, it, it, this condition when in the heterozygous state uh, has no effect on the animals and they live normal, productive lives. Uh, and so if we don't to make carrier carrier matings with this condition, like any other haplotype or recessive before it, uh, we see no harm and no, no, no danger in that. So it's something to, that we need to keep in mind. Uh, as we learn more about this condition and evaluate how we're going to incorporate it and make adjustments in the future in handling it, genetically speaking. Uh, but to, to say that it added to our work week this week, Kevin, I think would be uh, an understatement for sure. So Amen with that, that let's, uh, let's move on. That's a lot of data to get into and talk about. And uh, let's share some exciting news. Absolutely. And, and just the last part, I'll just add on recumbency as well. Uh, as a cooperative and what we're trying to do we're just trying to be as transparent as possible that's why you know this is this is moving uh, we support what uh, naab and cdcb and Holstein association are doing um, but as we've tested a lot of bulls we're just going to give the information to our customer base and and we will i guess the best way to say is stay tuned but 
I'm going to start with this slide and, and f maybe for a couple of reasons. Obviously, yesterday when all of the active AI lists and everything comes in and you start to really look at how we fared as an industry, because you, you kind of want to see where all that fits into. We do very well, as Rick said, on, um, no matter what your selection criteria is. But I tend to always migrate back to this slide, and there's a reason for it. Um, we're in a position where when you make a genetic investment, we don't know what the result is for three years. And as replacements are no longer per se a commodity, as there's less of them being created, more cows being bred to beef, uh, it's relatively important that, that uh, the right investment was made. And I look at this as, as sort of our track performance, our record of if you invested three years ago in our mutual fund called Select Sires, did you get the right return on investment? We are certainly not immune from having a bull change, uh, maybe in a way that we didn't anticipate. But I think this slide proves that if you invest in us and you invest in our genetics, the higher likelihood of having that return on investment, I think, is, is, is proof in the pudding. And it's why I continue to look at this list of 97% reliability. Maybe you're out using nothing but the next-gen bulls in your breeding program. But they, the validation of these bulls meeting the, 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 the muster, being able to the bulls we'll talk about here in a moment that moved into the proven graduate status, this is significant, I believe. And, and, and so as I look at this, and it's not just 48, it's nine of the top 20. It's 24 of the top 50. So not only just the top 100 bulls, the top 50 high-ranking, high-reliability bulls call Select Sire's home, and that means you're milking more than likely daughters of those bulls. They're hopefully hitting the marks that you want your cows to perform at. And as I said, that's going to get to be more and more significant when you have less replacements and everyone counts. And so that uh, is sort of my theme at the beginning of looking at all the lists and everything that we looked at this week. But as Rick said, an amazing day and the eyeball test met the, what we were seeing. And, and I get the opportunity to talk about the first bull that we're going to visit about today, a bull that has ranked in the top five for semen cells for select sires for the last, uh, for 2022, continues to be one of our most popular bulls. Started in the next jam program, but now with Milking Daughters, debuts as the number three TPI bull in the breed, and that's 7H15085, Seamers Renegade Parfait. Renegade had a great day this week, and, and he's a breed changing bull. He's doubled his type. He went from a point on type to two points on type, from no daughters to daughters. And his sons are hitting a lot of the same metrics. And when you look at a bull like Parfait, debuts at number three in the list, he's got the great components but yet ranks in the top 50 bulls of the breed for type. He ranks in the top 50 bulls in the breed for utter composite. He's A2A2, he's BB. He just hits every mark and a bull that's incredibly exciting. Um, we're gonna talk about several of these renegade sons that graduated uh, and I'll talk about the sons later. We had 25 Farfetch sons and we'll talk about some of those and it's very exciting. But when you see these daughters here that are coming in time after time, and this is what we're seeing. And even daughters that aren't in his type proof yet, this daughter here is an 87 point daughter that's from the art program out of a legacy dam, went 87 points, as I said, just fresh. And I, then this photo got uh, snapped about two weeks ago when she got classified. He makes these kind, they're black, they're, they're balanced, they've got great width, they've got great feet and legs, and they've got terrific covers. So this bull significant because we've marketed a lot of his semen, we've used him as a sire father, uh, his his dam 27856 the delta lambda daughter at seamers is on a handful of most influential cows in the breed uh, with not only perfect but all the other sons that we've got in our program her two highest sons just got delivered to select last week so we're really excited about this bull and what he's able to do on the same token a bull that doesn't quite hit the reliability to make the top 100 list but would be right there near the top 10 is 250H15152 Renegade ahead. Um, a bull that's not a surprise. If you look at the screen there and you see that Robot Pro logo, this bull is bred in a 700 cow robot facility, one of my favorite collaborators to work with, Blumenfeld Holstein's up in Northern Minnesota, uh, and just a great, great cow family. A bull that does some things uniquely different. He's a great component sire, but still gets to 150 pounds of combined fat and protein. He's got a balanced linear profile. He's a bull that's BB on Kappa casing. 
and, and it's going to continue to add more and more data, but we like what we see. The daughter photo there just got done down at Larson Acres in southern Wisconsin. Uh, really balanced cows. Again, like Renegade himself, but maybe a little better in the component respect. He's a point and a half on other composite. Just, again, a bull that, that we're really excited about. Again, a bull that we have uh, five sons uh, that we brought in out of a head. So he's doing a lot of things right. Another great graduate, another bull that's going to have a big influence. In fact, uh, one of the highest bulls we've got from your area, Rick, is out of an ahead dam. And I don't want to steal your thunder because we'll probably talk a little about it later. But just two really, really good graduates. But you got one that we've liked awful well as, as well. Well, a few other bulls that uh, reach graduate status this time, uh, first of which is a T one of our early Tahiti sons, Fly Higher Moonshiner, uh, 14H15201. Uh, he is, as I said, a Tahiti son out of an 88-point flagship, then an 87-point Delta, and a 94 McCutcheon goes back to the Missies, so full, full pedigree to talk about here. Um, he's a bull that uh, Joins the sire right near the top of the TPI list. He's 13th on the proven list now for TPI. He's top 15 or number 15 on net merit. So kind of a, a double header uh, there in terms of hitting both national selection indexes right at the top of the breed. Uh, we've been marketing Moonshiner very successfully for quite some time. We've got a nice portfolio of his sons. We'll talk about one or two of those later on uh, here this afternoon. But he's a bullet. When I started looking at the data, and I've had the chance to see quite a few daughters, um, I think we've got uh, a really, really good utter bull, no doubt about that. Uh, I think when you look at the current linear compared to what we see in, in, in the barns, I think there's some opportunity for the foot and leg information to get a little better as he gets more of his own daughter scored and pull away from some of the Tahiti information. And I think they're maybe just a tad bit stronger uh, from what I've seen here, at least in the East Coast than what we're seeing today. So uh, it is just 23 daughters and 12 herds. So as he adds more daughters, I think we could see this linear profile even become more attractive because uh, they have been some of the favorites. You can protect them somewhat on rump angle. He will get the pins a little bit higher. But uh, interestingly, I don't do a lot of independent culling levels and in, in things. But when I looked at Moonshiner, I'm like 1,500 pounds of milk. Check. Nearly two points on utter composite. Check. Wait a minute. The bull's plus on DPR. And so then I just said, okay, 1,500 to milk plus DPR, a point and a half on type, a point and a half on udders, proven. He's the only bull in the breed that meets those four very basic yet very important criteria. So uh, he's a bull I've always liked. I've always been excited about. I've liked him even more now that I see him in milking form. Kevin, you, you know, you see those three daughters on the on the side of the screen. I think very representative, especially that height and width and volume of rear udder that he sires. Uh, really, really happy with Moonshiner now uh, as a proven graduate to to sustain uh, the genetic impact that he's already created through through his sons and, and will continue to have moving forward. And just another cow here that we purchased for the art program. Uh, now fresh, calving, milked at, milking, uh, will get scored and just a really nice representation of, uh, of what we're seeing here with, with Moon, Moonshiner thus far. Uh, 14H15223 Conway, a uh, hugely popular bull as a genomic bull, uh, a bull that has hit a lot of different markets, has sold virtually every unit of semen he's produced thus far, and I think that trend will continue. Uh, 138 daughters and 33 herds debuts at number 20 on the list uh, for, for TPI. You know, he is what he has always been, uh, a moderate production, high solids bull, high percent fat and protein. You see that wonderful linear. I mean, literally everything to the right, which so many people love. Uh, bull will add some flexibility to the leg and the hock with great bone quality. He'll improve teat length, which is something that we get so consistently now from Renegade and his sons. Um, he can A2A2 BB. That's never going to change. Uh, so this bull has been a huge success for us. We love what we see. I've seen daughters just fresh, real you know, 30, 40 days. You wonder, are they going to milk quite enough? And then you remind yourself, he's a 400 pound milk bull. Then you see them 150 to 200 days and they have just blossomed into wonderful cows with beautiful rib structure, tremendous udders, 
rear udders maybe could carry a little fuller at the top, but with the udder, some symmetry of udder, uh, this is a success story uh, from start to what's going to be a long, long finish down the road. This bull's got a huge shelf life to him, and I think a, a big time customer satisfaction bull in Conway. And we have 44 sons of Conway. So it's great news that he's right near the top of the charts as well. Tell them about these two. Well, they just happen to be sisters to uh, to Frostbite, I do believe, Kevin. So uh, bulls that, uh, cow family and bulls that are having a huge impact. And when you see them in living flesh that calve out, are going to put on real life lactations and, and real life classification scores. I'm not sure you could ask for too much more than this. Love the bull flag, but you've seen more than I have. That's why I let you talk about it. Well, another bull I've seen a lot of daughters of and definitely passes the eye test is 7H15112 Leaning House Taos. Another renegade son, this time from a Jedi, uh, from an 88-point Tatum and then 91-point Gabor. And I love Gabor. I've always loved Gabor. The Michaela cow was a great, great cow. Um, and when you look at this pedigree and, and what the bull has behind him and then what he is becoming, um, this is another favorite of mine. I love love what I see in the barn. Uh, he is a strength bull. For those of you that are worried that we're getting too small, too frail, too narrow, this bull will not do that. He will add width. He will add substance. Uh, you see that uh, uh, plus over a point on strength and zero dairy form. These are cows that have some oomph and some power. Uh, he's another bull that will definitely improve teat length like we've seen in all these other renegade sons. Uh, another high solids bull. Uh, a bull that's in the top 25 of the breed for DPR. And when you look at the top 50 DPR bulls, uh, Kevin, you pointed out he's 100 TPI points higher than any other bull in the top 50. So not only are these cows that are going to get pregnant, his genetic qualities as far as combined fat and protein type, fitness traits, productive life are so much far ahead of, of the rest of the game there. Uh, he's BB on Kappa casein. Again, a bull has, we'll talk about some of his really nice sons uh, moving forward, but uh, this is a bull that I've, I've probably seen more of these than the house daughters than any of the other graduates. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just love them. And you go to the next slide uh, of daughter pictures here to me, especially the cow, the whiter cow on the, on the, on the screen here is exactly what I see. Utters tremendous utter clearance, tremendous width and shape to the utter. Um, you see some more Jedi in, and that's where that strength is coming from in the pedigree, but you don't see that extremely straight Jedi posty leg. So we've gotten away from that and Ren Renegade helped fix that aspect of the pedigree. Um, and this is just a bullet I really, really admire and like, and I think uh, you as customers, when you start calving these out are going to like them too. Yeah. I mean, these two here, we just, these literally got done a week ago today. We did them last Friday. The one on the top is at Trentway and, out of simplicity daughter and from the, we'll talk about the Trentway family later, but we, they're just, they're peas in a pod. Great, great bull. The other one is, is from the art program at Barry Ridge Farms. Again, kind of went 80 points with a 83 udder in real life. She's a rock star. The next bull I get to talk about again, a bull of significance, liked and made sons. Uh, in fact, an incredibly high son. Uh, just in Taos, we had 20 sons of him that we've sampled. But 15097, T-Spurs News in Granada, uh, a bull that is important to our program because he's the sire of Frostbite. And I think once you see the data and you see these daughters and you see that, and, and Rick just showed you a couple of Conway sisters to Frostbite, all of these things we hope add some more um, credence, some more confidence in, the, in these bulls. But in the case of Granada, was a bull that – didn't see a lot early on and then through the winter here began to see more and more of them. Didn't know where his proof was going to land, but there were some things that I thought were significant. They're clean bone cows. They look like they want to milk. Well, here's a big shot. He's 2146 of milk and 160 pounds of combined fat and protein. He's a bull that has tremendous utter quality. The daughters are really soft udders. Well, he's a mastitis resistance pro bull. He's 1225 on DWP, right near the top of the charts in that respect. And oh, by the way, you settled cows. So when you put that all together, it, it's it's a great, great combination and a bull that ranks right near the top end of the list again. And, and one of the highest net merit uh, proven bulls and one of our highest HHP proven bulls. So 
I highlighted all of his index because indexes because it doesn't really matter what index you use. I think you can find a place to use Renata. It works in the robot situations. He's got that designation. And being a little different, he's a Nugent son. Nugent was a bull that uh, has a few hundred daughters in his proof. We never marketed the bull because of some challenges with him, but he was an outsider son. Uh, they gave us some diversity. Uh, mother was a Damaris from Billy Peck. And then on the bottom side, you've got a frazzled who made over 46,000 pounds of milk. Then in a head daughter that's 86 and well over 40,000 pounds of milk again. And then it's a different shot of the Mindy's because then there's Shamrock Mena and then uh, shot Mindy again. So it's a proven cow family on the bottom side. And here you've got a bull. As you can see these daughters here, I mean, these are all in Wisconsin. Um, got great udders, really nice ones. And again, this daughter here, we just pictured last Friday at Berry Ridge Farms in Wisconsin. This cow scored 79 points. I was walking the freestyles looking for some other daughters to picture, and all of a sudden I'm like, that's a heck of a cow. Turns her head, and she's got Granada in her ear tag, and I was like, we need this cow. And just a smacking good udder, and it's even more impressive in person even than this good photo of the cow. So, again, a significant bull. We had five sons of them, but I think that's certainly one of those, uh, another great, great proven graduate right near the top of the charts. So these first bulls that we've talked about, we have 119 sons of these bulls that we just shared with you. So it's, it's, it's pretty exciting stuff, and that's why we've got a lot of good info to share with you. We also had a new graduate in the Red and White program, and that's Salsa Red, um, an Argo son. So he's a little bit different. He goes back into the, to the shimmers and, and, the, and the planet silks on the bottom side, so similar to Salvatore, but not Salvatore himself. He's an Argo son that gets a shot of uh, uh, altitude. Um, the, the great Durham daughter, mother of Advent, and on the top side and on the bottom side, you've got Planet Silk's maternal line. He's a bull that should be the number two proven red and white sire in the breed, a bull that's over a point in udders, excels in mastitis resistance again, something that Spencer Hackett, the breeder of this bull, believes in uh, immensely. Um, just starting to see some of these daughters. And when we pictured that Taos at Trentway last week, again, discovering the free cells. And I'm like, who's that red cow? Well, she was a salsa and she, we should have pictured her that day too. A bull that's had some sons. I'm going to mention salsa again uh, in, in a moment uh, on some G-Force bulls, but a really exciting right near the top of the charts, red and white sire that uh, is going to work on a lot of the rompins and the reeves and all the Roxy blood that we've had in the red white program. Now we've got an alternative to that as well. So that's, there's more proven graduates than that, but in the essence of time, Rick, let's talk about next gen. Well, uh, again, next gen bulls had a great, great day from, from top to bottom. It's, it continues to be a program that provides tremendous early access to our very best in elite genetics. Uh, you basically get to use these bulls at nearly the same time that Kevin and I are using them as mating sires or not too far after that for by any means. So uh, when we get into our, our first bull here on uh, next gen, you know, Sheepster, uh, one of my personal favorites. He has been our, was our heaviest use mating sire uh, for 2022 without it being too close. Uh, the bull we'll talk about next was, was second on our overall usage, but bullet checks so many different boxes you see the high cfp there so let's just call it 200 pound cfp um, with high percentages he is our number one hhp bull at select sires at 1310 uh, you see the good mastitis resistance the low somatic cell um, good productive life linear profile it's a a unique bull being one of the very few trooper sons. His dam is an Acura. Uh, just saw her several weeks ago. She scored 83. She's got a lot more points in her and, and she'll get there in time. Uh, next dam's an 85 point resolve and then an 87 point delta. So a nice full pedigree uh, can you, continues to be one of the very highest bulls in the breed uh, that you can buy semen on. The rankings of young bulls are pretty arbitrary because you never really know what bulls have semen for sale or not for sale on some of these uh, publications and lists. But I know Sheepster will be one of the very highest uh, TPI, HHP, net merit bulls that you can buy semen on today through the Next Gen program. Uh, and a bull, we're, we're very excited about what his contributions are going to be because he got a lot of opportunity as a mating sire for us. Uh, in the early release time frame. 
Uh, the second bull still in next gen is another one of my favorites, uh, 14H 16391 Pine Tree Easton. Uh, kind of a unique pedigree bull. He's an outcome son from a, a 84 point pursuit, then a, a good plus achiever and a good plus Morgan era that uh, has been made famous uh, from all of her successful offspring and, and relatives. Uh, Easton is another bull that just is so balanced. Uh, he, I love the caseins to start with. He's A2A2, he's BB Kappa casein, he's BB Beta Lac, uh, high productive life, high DPR, good fertility index, good mastitis resistance. He has good scores for DWP, uh, nice balanced linear profile, um, tremendous utter profile and linear and utter composite. And as I said, you know, he's a bull that for our program in particular, being a renegade free, frazzled free pedigree is a bullet you can just use up and down the road. And he has genetic contributions and qualities that suggest that you can do that really, really safely. Um, and as I said, he was our second highest use bull uh, from, from a contract mating perspective. And now uh, going through his second sire summary here in, in the next gen program. Uh, I think very exciting bull for us. A, a tremendous one, two combination, if you will. Uh, with Sheepster and Easton. And probably should mention, Rick, both of the, actually all the next gen bulls we'll talk about today, there is only one next gen bull that is a recumbency carrier, and uh, that is Kelso. The rest of these have been tested. They are negative, so you can use these bulls with confidence. Yep. Well, we talked about Taos just a few minutes ago. One of his exciting sons is 7H15977. Welcome tell Taos Hake. Uh, Taos son out of the uh, the 85 point Tahiti you see in the top side of your screen uh, from a 85 point superhero. And then at the 88 point Montrose Hadley cow in the bottom uh, portion of your screen there goes back to the Halo family. So again, deep, deep maternal cow family with a full pedigree. Uh, Taos is one of our, or excuse me, Hake is one of our highest HHP bulls once again, uh, number five overall in the select program at 1233. You see those correlations of extremely low somatic cell with high mastitis resistance. Another bull that uh, has a really nice, easy to use linear profile, no holes, no faults whatsoever. And Hake is also a bull we used quite aggressively as a mating sire because of these genetic qualities that you're buying today. Uh, and we're pretty happy to report uh, with some pretty good success early on uh, with some Hake sons already in the pipeline. That'll be, I'm sure, a year to 18 months from now, we'll be talking about those on a, a Facebook Live in the future. So uh, another really, really solid bull in the next gen program that's having a very positive impact for us. Absolutely. And some really nice calves thus far. <clears throat> another of the game day sons, and like I say, the, the bull's going to have a big influence in this bull also. Some of his earliest sons are really, really exciting as we're getting results on them is 7H15913 Khan. A game day son that's out of an 86 point Lionel that's pictured right there, went through the national convention sale last year, now lives at Seamers Holsteins, uh, was a cow that uh, um, Mark Hearnt and, and Wilbur Farms uh, down in Illinois, they've had great success in collaborating together and, and creating this bull and con. Uh, again, 1200 on his HHP dollars, but hits every index, 3100 GTPI, 1179 net merit, 187 pounds of combined fat and protein with, again, a real modern linear profile. Doesn't make him super tall, but doesn't make him short either. His, his uh, utter traits are all in the right direction. Uh, and A2A2, A2, uh, just again, a bull that with that low mastitis that we get from the game days, um, all of these things together create a bull that, that I think is, is quite easy to use, particularly, again, on all the renegade blood, on the Parfix and the Conways and the Tauses. This is a bull that I think fits in those cows incredibly well and does a great job. Well, 14H16316, Ladies Manor Outcome Tuba is another exciting outcome, son, uh, just like Easton in the Next Gen program. Uh, this bull kind of combines two of my really all-time favorite cow families. Uh, the Granite Oom cow at Ladies Manor on the top side of his pedigree and outcome. And then this uh, alphabet tuba, uh, you see pictured on the screen, the dam of, of outcome tuba himself. She's an 85 point alphabet. I love alphabet. If you watch this, you know that. Uh, and you continue to hear me talk about the great attributes that he brings to the table. Uh, behind this alphabet's a 91 point uh, Toronto. That's a silky wet milk machine. So 
we see a lot of those characteristics coming through in tuba, a uh, high CFP, uh, 71 pounds of protein. You see the low somatic cell, the high mastitis resistance, the A2A2 beta casein, uh, nice overall linear profile. Tuba is available in next gen. His full brother, Tambourine, is available in G-Force. So two opportunities to access this, this particular pedigree, bulls of similar genetic quality. And the pedigree is, again, stacked up really nicely. Uh, we talked about Taos before and all these different renegade sons uh, to, to put a big shot of production and protein into those. He is a little short on teat length, but that co is complemented nicely by the renegade blood. So, again, a bull that fits really nice for our program and what he can do to your herds uh, down the road. Like you said, lightning struck twice because we've got two brothers, one in next gen, one not. Time will tell which one's the right one. They're probably yep. both good. Yeah, but talk about double the pleasure. The next two bulls I get to talk about again, maternal brothers, but both equally heavy duty bulls in our program. 14H, 15, uh, level plane Van Gogh. Again, right near the top of the charts. I think he was our number three uh, mating sire usage bull in 2022, a bull that continues to get uh, better. His rankings continue to improve and in terms of available bulls in AI, we run all of these different sorts that I spent last night doing. He shows up and, and just literally list after list after list. He's one of our best mastitis resistance sires when you look at 257 cell score, four points on CDCB mastitis and 109 on Zoetis. And that's part of what's driving that again. Quintuplet index, he's good in TPI and at Merit, Cheese, Merit, HHP, DWP. He's A2, A2. He's 192 pounds of combined fat and protein. The best part I can tell you about this bull, and it translates into both, is the mother. I got to see this mother several times. She's just about ready to calf for the second time. Uh, this 83-point achiever, she's going to move up and score. It's a great, great maternal line. I really admire this cow. Acura is a bull that, that has hit the muster over time and, and, and one high reliability bulls that are out there. We've got 39 sons with Acura Dam, so we're very happy about that. But this one's right near the top of the charts. And then his brother, Versace, doesn't have to take a back seat to him. Same cow, just a different angle. 1,200 net merit, 172 combined fat and protein. 1,178, also A2A2. So being a supercharged son kind of puts the, the planet sapphires on the top side and this cow flame on the bottom. The next name's a very good achiever behind this Acura. And then a Delta daughter. So... Two next gen bulls that I think are going to have a big influence, easy to use again on, on the renegade bloodlines because we're to the point of people needing a bull that is free of renegade. And the good news is we have them in, in, in these two brothers as well as a uh, lot of the next gen lineup. Next bull, a bull that had a great, great day. Early new entrant into next gen, that's 7, 8, 16, 487 payday. And payday is a uh, payload son. And he's an isocal, so you got, and he's a bull that continues to do really well over time. Then you've got, and as this bull continues to move up, he's a brother to Frostbite again. We keep bringing back this consistent theme of that great Lionel daughter, 13196 at Teespurs. It keeps cranking these up. This is a bull, probably, quite frankly, I know Mark Kern's going to go back and use as a mating sire, and I, and for good reason, and I'll probably try to use some matings on him as well. 196 pounds of combined fat protein, A2, A2. A little different top side sire, as I said, and being a payload son. He's a robot ready bull. You look at the teat placement, kind of right where you want the robot world to be with not uh, diminishing teat length, but putting the teats in, the, in a more of a central spot. So, again, a bull I think has got, got major, major opportunities to be used in uh, in a lot of the next gen uh, daughters that, that are on the gallon. He'll work on game days. He'll work on, on a wide variety of cows. Kevin, you just mentioned the fact you like the isocals and or uh, sakus, it's a six, whatever we we refer to it as. But uh, seven H one what seven H one six three nine six Felix has as a couple has a saku as the maternal grandsire cow. It's now eighty six points up at Oakfield Corners Dairy. This bull has two doses of things that I like. I like a saku, and I also really like what I'm seeing on the Legacy Drive. 
uh, heifer calves. So a drive son, one of our early drive sons out of an 86 point cow and a Saku daughter from a really nicely developing cow family up there at Oakfield Corners. Um, another bull in next gen is a high HHP bull. He's a good DWP bull. He's a good dollar value bull and a high TPI bull. Really hits all four major indexes really nicely. Uh, you see the low somatic cell, um, A2A2 BB, and another set of casings that's flawless in that respect. He's Again, probably one of our top five or six contract mating bulls uh, for last year. Uh, high solids bull, especially high for percent fat. Uh, and that double that up with a three and a half percent mastitis resistance, uh, a, a bull we really like. Renegade free pedigree. So again, with Parfect and Taos uh, really hitting the list this time, a, an easy to use bull on daughters of them and, and even granddaughters of those two bulls in particular. Um, <clears throat> well, the last of the next gen bulls we'll talk about quick is uh, 7, 507H. Want to make that clear? 507H 16414 Malari Fireball Red. Basically, the number three bull in the breed for red genomic young sires, as I sorted through the list throughout last night. But what I love about this bull is he's one of the few Robin Sons that's available today, being in Robin, one of our most popular red bulls. And again, the Trent Wakeout family delivers for us time after time after time. But then on the bottom side, we've got a red uh, salsa daughter that's 83 already as a young cow star. She looks great up at Spencer Hackett's. And he was innovative enough to use his very influential Frazzle Fandango donor that had no red in her, used salsa, made the red factor daughter. And then we created this great, great bull. It's a mastitis resistance pro bull. Again, huge traits. And if you look at his Zoetis data, I, I highlighted it all because he hits every one of the, the major health indexes in the Zoetis traits, including calf wellness traits, which we'll continue to put more and more emphasis on all the time. And then being A2, A2 and BB, we felt this bull been using him as a sire father since the first of the year. He's genetically protectable. The other side of the bull is, is he's not going to be a huge, huge semen producer throughout his career. So we've made the decision that we're only going to market the bull and utilize as much of his production as possible into the sex program. And uh, so he's going to be available sex only, but really, really, I think going to be a significant sire father for our red and white program with just a slightly different. Uh, everybody keeps telling me they need Salvatore free. Well, he's not Salvatore free, but he's Salvatore light in terms of his influence. And so I think a bull is going to be really, really significant. And Rick, before we get into the next group of G-Force bulls, I do see we've got several questions already. So I, let's maybe just check on a couple of these first. And, and Sashin, you asked a question about the SCR on a head, uh, minus 1.9. The way that works is they have breed average at about 33%. So it probably means they're going to cat if they, if your average was 33%, he's going to be about uh, 31%. Uh, it doesn't mean that they're infertile. It just means that they're slightly uh, below the, the industry average or within our, our group of bulls. Um, certainly he's got a lot of daughters and he's settled a lot of cows. And, and the other side of it is, 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 and I don't reckon I don't have that data immediately available, but our salespeople do is, um, our CFI rankings on sex semen, as we sell more and more of our products sorted, you maybe want to ask about uh, uh, sex, uh, sex because that's going to make a difference as well. So that's something on that first question. Second question from Atarva, can you get semen in, in India? Yes, we've got a worldwide sires distributor in India. Worldwide sires is our, our uh, sister company that does our international marketing. So it certainly can do that. And then, um, this one, Rick, maybe I should let you mention that on, on Gabor, but milk and speed on Towson Conway. Haven't had any complaints from anybody. I don't have the specific data. We use most of the data from Canada for milking speed, but um, all I know is that people like them. Had nobody mentioned about them, but Rick, if you got anything on that, uh, you can certainly weigh in on that as well. No, I wouldn't have anything to add. I mean, there's nothing about them from a physically looking at them eyeball test uh, as far as utter texture, quality, teat size, shape, length, nothing about them that would be worrisome. Uh, but until we have genetic evaluations based on actual milking time, uh, I understand why people place emphasis on milking speed, but the current evaluations we have, I'm not sure are genetically speaking, uh, 
exactly what we'd like to base most of our decisions on at this point. So until we get to some more accurate, actual parlor timed evaluations, um, I'm hesitant to get too crazy about milking speed. And uh, I have some international experience with some markets that place a lot of emphasis on milking speed. And when they visit the U.S., they will tell me that the U.S. does not have a milking speed problem. There are probably some faster and some that are slower, but in terms of a uh, the days of M Toto when they were slow milking, uh, we d we just don't see that in in today's uh, genetic population. Right, and I guess in I my should, opinion, yes. And I guess the only other thing I'd mention is CDCB is looking at milking speed evaluations. It's 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 complex, like Rick said, and it's not just are they fast or slow. It's milk flow. It's all of those things. So they are looking into it and I'm optimistic before Rick and I retire, maybe we'll have a better genetic uh, estimate of milking speed. But Rick, you got a pretty cool bull to talk about that is maybe me as, as big a hitter or a needle moving bull and that's Chupi. Yeah, I, I'm looking down at my notes here in the, the last couple of days. Uh, I'm, it's looks like a mess because I keep writing more and more little tidbits and notes about this bull and uh, did uh, a video conference with our folks here in the East Coast uh, last night and you know, they asked if there was a sleeper bull. I, I don't know if this is a sleeper bull, but uh, that he should be noticed at this point. 7H16103Chu-P, uh, an extra P son out of a very good luster. Yes, very good 85 point luster. Um, that has changed over time. Uh, the bull early in his life, the mother did not have a real high classification score based on her first classification. Uh, every time the class fire went back to Penn England, she got a couple points. She got a couple points. She got a couple more points. And now she is 85. So if you looked at this bull uh, a year ago and hesitated to use them because of the dam's classification score, that has changed. Major update. So um, I don't know, Kevin, if you know the Dutch, my heritage, we're kind of stubborn. We're noted, known to be stubborn. Really? And really? yeah, it's, I've been told that and, um, when, uh, of course, when questioned a little bit about Chu P and the dam's classification score, I'm like, trust me, this cow is better than that. She will get better. Uh, and then I held my breath and said, I hope she lives long enough to get better. And thankfully she has. So exciting bull. But then when you you know, he's a polled bull. He's done tremendous things for our polled program. I looked last night. Now five of the top 10 polled females uh, in the U.S. are sired or, you know, sired by Chu P. So genetically speaking, he is really going to move the needle and we'll have access to work with those daughters in the future to further enhance the quality of our polled program. Um, but then you look at this bull just just from a he's 2.2 on tight. He's nearly two on udders beautiful linear profile. He's A2A2. He's BB. He's a thousand pounds of milk. He's 3000 TPI. I mean, the bull is really competitive with his horned counterparts. He's positive on SCR. The bull has so many positive things going in. And then with the, the qualities that he offers, you know, you look at the Lionel daughters and the Tahiti daughters and the Moonshiner daughters. The bull is going to complement so much of our lineup. Um, and then of course, so I, I'm pretty excited about this bull, as you can tell. And, and the, I got even more excited a couple of weeks ago. You alluded to it earlier, Kevin. Um, we had a, a calf born, uh, tested from Aurora Ridge. Uh, dam just happens to be in a head daughter is where you alluded to it. And, uh, the calf today is 3250 TPI. So at the time he was our highest TPI bull. I think he's second or third overall now. Uh, we had to wait a week or two, and fortunately, the bull is also polled. So exciting things that Chu is doing for us. We've got a beautiful lineup of, of polled sons of Chu P to select through and sort from that will come into our program. So uh, I don't think he'll be a sleeper bull any further, or sh he certainly shouldn't be, uh, but a really exciting bull to, to continue to have positive uh, contributions for us down the road. And, and I'll just add one more thing. I can remember a few of these sessions or a couple of years ago and everybody asking about how many luster P sons do you have? And how come you don't have more? We just said the AM and PP is one of our luster sons. The influence of luster on the maternal side is going to be massive, not only because of, of Penn England and, and their influence, but we'll get to that a little later. But um, we're going to be just fine in terms of our influence of that great bull luster P. Another bull that I'm uh, 
really excited about and a little bit of a sleeper too. I talked earlier about a bull from Oakfield Corners drive, a drive son named Felix. And here is almost his carbon copy in Sabretooth. The drive out of an Acura next to Amazon IMAX. Just saw his Sabretooth's mother again. She's 82 points. She needs to see the classifier. She's a moderate stature cow with an abundance of width, strength, and power with a gorgeous udder. Uh, She'll she'll get to that very good category, I think, quite easily. So Sabretooth in the G-Force program, 170 CFP. You see all those CDBC wellness traits highlighted, tremendous mastitis resistance, metritis resist. I mean, he's above average in every one of those CDBC traits. Another bull, A2A2, BB. He'll be that for the rest of his life. And so you can utilize them there to improve, improve your milk casings uh, without any hesitancy. And uh, just, again, like I think we're going to find with the legacy drives, they're going to be moderate framed, uh, but really good udders. And we see some of those characteristics coming through in Sabretooth. So one of those bulls that's uh, readily available, uh, both in conventional and or sexed, and uh, I think a full complimentary bull. And, and when we talk about the difference between Felix and Sabretooth, quite honestly, they could both be in next gen, but to having both bulls in separate availability offers a wider variety of our customers the opportunity to, to benefit from both bulls genetically and then look at all the designations that bull has i mean feed pro robot pro grazing pro he fits a lot of different markets yep the next bull i'm really excited to tell you about today because he's he's really the culmination of what next gen has been able to do for our customer base so it was four years ago this week when we introduced next gen into the marketplace and the breeder of this bull seven eight sixteen five twenty pbj breeder that i've known for years and he's just done a, done a great job one of the high production herds in the state of wisconsin he joined next gen right away done a little work with him in sire development continue to do so but he loved next gen and, and, and that's exclusively what he uses. And the first bull he bought was Renegade. And he got a pretty good daughter and he took her and bred her to game day. Use sex semen, got a bull. And the bull that you see on the screen here is a second generation next gen bull in PBJ. He's a game day from a Renegade, from a Frazzled. I was just down there a few weeks ago. Those two cows are not scored yet but they're gonna be very soon. And the Renegade is due for a second lactation here in about 60 days. These are two fantastic cows. And it's and it goes back, <clears throat> go deep enough, it's got some pretty good cow family to it. But this is a bull that gave an opportunity to somebody by utilizing early genetics and making a bull that's right near the top of the charts in a lot of different areas. 190 CFP, 1169 and HHP, 1245, you know, great mastitis resistance, a bull with a solid, solid linear profile, right as modern as you can get it, 175 and other composite. Just a pretty exciting bull that's a success story from someone that took advantage of next gen, did what they wanted to do, made something that's pretty unique for us. And, and I think that's really what we always hoped four years ago that next gen we create. And here now we've got an, an example of that that's, that's an remarkable product. Another bull that is a, one of these game day sons, again, recumbency free. Rick, when I asked you the other day, we were talking about this, and you said, who's Freddie? I was like, that means we need to talk about it. So 14, 8, 16, 413, Freddie, uh, same cow family as Fireball Red. This one here is a game day son out of Nugent Frosty. Nugent, again, the sire of Granada, um, was used on some of those early frazzled daughters. She's an 87-point cow, just getting ready to calve again for the second time. And then Fandango, and then the great F family that uh, has made uh, Malaria household name. A bull, again, elite for HHP at 1124. One of our best, again, combination of mastitis traits, low cell, good D, uh, mastitis with CDCB and 105 in uh, Zoetis, makes him a high uh, DWP bull. And then uh, the advantage he has over game day himself is he's A2A2. So a bull, again, that I think does a lot of things uh, extremely well. Uh, new entrant uh, since we visited last time uh, into the G-Force lineup, but a bull that I, has been used some as a mating sire, and, and, I, and I don't want people to miss this bull because I think he's got some really attractive traits. 
Well, Spencer, first apologies for not knowing who Freddie was. We have 296 bulls coded as marketed, active, or, or proven, genomic or proven on our website, plus there's uh, hundreds more that have semen available. So I, I missed one. I, I, my apologies, especially proof week. Uh, and I'll admit, here's another bullet I maybe have missed or overlooked, but I tell you, the more you look at 7H16308 Ernest Bass, uh, I don't think he's going to be missed or overlooked too much longer. Mentioned how much we like drive already. He's a drive son. We mentioned how much we like Asaku. He's an Asaku. As Asaku's a dam, but not just any Asaku. Now, fresh a second time, just went 91 points. The next dam is one of those one name cows, the excellent 90 Habitan. So it goes back to Halo. You've got a full, full pedigree. And then you look at the bulls genetically. He's good on HHP. He's good on mastitis resistance, both Zoetis CDBC. He's got the A2A2 BB combination for caseins. Uh, nearly 1,500 of milk, 100 of fat, 60 of protein, nearly two on type, a point and a half on others with a really nice linear profile. Um, this bull is, is basically one proof away from having a sire conception rate and if that bull comes through high this bull will be on allocation for a long long time so before that happens uh you might want to put them in your tanks now because i think this bull has a lot of really really cool qualities from the pedigree to his dam and grand dam but then genetically speaking what he offers uh just a really really exciting bull um, that probably has been a little under the radar as well but I think those days uh, are probably over and uh, we look forward to him gaining the, the popularity and the respect that he's, he does deserve. I'll tell you who didn't miss him. And that's our friend, Mr. Mark Kern. This is his favorite bull, maybe one that he's as proud of. Every time we do the mating sire list, I'd see him there and I'm like, I don't know. And Mark used the bull and with good reason. And you're right. This is quite a bull. Yep. We talked earlier about Moonshiner and, and the, the nice portfolio of Suns. Uh, one of the nicest is 7H15980. Welcome, Moonshiner Huhan. Uh, bull's been active for quite a while now as a G Force bull. Uh, continues to, to hold up very nicely. He is one of those HHP specialists, mastitis resistant uh, specialists, uh, fitness trait specialists. Uh, thousand of milk, two points on type, uh, nearly two points on other composites. You see this. Uh, 87 point dam. The, the cows on the screen are actually as grand dam and great grand dam. So uh, full pedigreed moonshiner sun right at the top of the G force program. And uh, bullet can, I think will continue to be a very popular bull for us. So we has been used as a mating sire. We don't have our first calf uh, results yet, uh, but we're hoping certainly that he'll continue on that, that legacy of being a successful sire father from, uh, from moonshiner uh, on back through the pedigree. Well, the next bull is a bull that, uh, again, from the breeders of a head, but a different cow family, but a bull that, again, exemplifies what these breeders are trying to do. Again, as I said earlier, love working with, uh, with the Wildners up at Blumenfeld, uh, 700 cow robot facility. Again, big shock. They've got a bull here that's a robot ready kind of bull in Blumenfeld timber, 14H16532. He's another legacy drive son. We've talked a lot about those today, Rick, but they're just cranking it out. They're making great sons. This one out of that Acura that's pictured here, uh, the next dam is a Yoda daughter that's now very good 87. And then it goes back into a different fork of Reason and Resolve's cow family. And it goes back multiple generations without a skip or a blip in that cow family. Positive, you know, percents again, he's 160 CFP. He's a bull that adds the right casings again. So really, when you look at a bull with an alternative pedigree, again, working on a lot of the traditional select sires bloodlines, whether that be um, Game Day and Renegade Sons and a lot of the very popular bulls that are out there at the front edge of the sword, this bull is going to work really, really well in those respects. Well, I think one of my last bulls uh, to wrap up here, Kevin, or as we get close to wrapping up, is 7H15967, High Oom Ohm. Uh, here's a bull that has been a sleeper in, in laying in the weeds, but uh, uh, it wasn't just select sires, bulls that had nice genetic evaluations as proof round. Uh, this uh, bull sire high jump had a really nice day and you'll find him quite high up on the proven sire list. We were fortunate to be able to acquire this rather unique high jump son for the select sires program uh, a few years ago. 
So you've got a full, full pedigreed, uh, now sired by a proven bull in high jump. And this bull is pretty darn cool. Solid production, linear, almost all to the right. There's just a little fraction of, of, of a 0.05 to the left, I guess, but an awesome linear profile. High SCR. This bull was progeny tested through our GD Pro P program. He's been out there. He's gotten use. Now has an SCR, which is certainly going to catch people's attraction and attention. He's A1, A2. He's BB. Again, as they were asking me about under the radar bulls or sleeper bulls last night, uh, I told them they had about 12 hours before I went global with Facebook Live and told people about this bull. So they better order their semen today or it might be too late. But I, I think this bull is really, really cool. Um, he's recumbency free. So uh, that'll be a little bit unique for this pedigree as well. Fortunately, we got lucky on the test results on this bull and being recumbency free. But uh, beautiful linear profile, balanced, full pedigree bull with a great, great SCR. Yeah, one more. One more, and uh, then it's turning the show after, off to you, Kevin. But 507H16418 Plain Knoll Drive Draft. Uh, another drive son. Uh, we, we've talked about quite a few of those, and I don't think we realized it when we put it together, but uh, there's a reason for it, and, and it's because we like the bull and what he's offering here. But from our friends at Plain All, this bull is, is a bull, again, we've used as a mating sire, and a bull had a really nice day and just kind of ticked upward right straight across the board. He's a 1,200 cheese merit bull. He's good on HHP. He's an A2A2 sire, good CFP, solid linear profile. This is a bull that... Um, it is seeing a little bit of a change. He was introduced into the marketplace with both conventional and sex semen. Uh, we made a decision to, because of the in increasing demand for sex semen, to, to move some bulls to sexed only, to try to alleviate pressure on some other bulls in the system uh, to, and hopefully meet the demands and needs of our customers that are looking for more and more sex semen all the time. So this bull, uh, you might find a small number of conventional units still in the marketplace, but his all of his future production has been moved to sexed only uh, as we try to shift a few more bulls in that direction to, to keep up with the market demand. So uh, certainly a really solid, attractive bull with a pedigree. Uh, goes back to one of my favorite cows uh, in this resolve, uh, excellent resolve daughter at Plain Knoll in Mogul Moriah. So it, it's a family that's done really, really nicely for bushers in Plain Knoll and uh, another exciting young bull for our program. Well, don't go anywhere, Rick, because you're free to weigh in on any of these other ones and maybe check a little on those questions that are coming that we can before we move into the, the, the home stretch here. But there's a, there's a few bulls that I just thought were too good for us not to talk about today. They've been popular, but there's updates. And the first one is 7H15937, Sandy Valley Esquire. This Tau Sun, one of those 20 that we sampled, been one of his most popular. But as you look at this bull's data in the mold of his sire with, with maybe a little more production, the great DPR, even better mastitis resistance than his sire, in that beautiful linear and two point sense type and the white casings. But most importantly, take a look at the daughter photo. There. That's his mother. That's Escanaba. Uh, back in the late part of 2021, I told Greg Bauer, this is the next uh, eternity. This is the next great cow. She was fresh 30 days and now she's fresh the second time and she's excellent. That picture was taken 12 days fresh. And she went excellent 90, 12 days fresh at Seamers Holstein. She's a great cow. Uh, we've got a lot of brothers to this family, but this is one you don't want to miss because I think he's one of Taos's most exciting sons. Another of Parfex's finest sons was just released here this winter, 258 16561 Terra Linda Micah. This bull actually is our number two overall Parfex son for TPI. He's a bull, again, that does a lot of the right combinations. He's 1,000 on HHP. He's 163 CFP. He's two on type, almost 175 on udders in the right casings. When this bull was in the file and we were de determining whether he'd make the, the, the bus or not, we said, this bull looks like a select sighter's bull. And I think he does, and I'm glad that he's in. He's in the Generations lineup. But this is this is a bull that, that you really like. His mother's an 88-point cow. The second dam's an 89-point IMAX. Traces into the same cow family as McCutcheon and all those bulls back to Shottle May. So a great pedigreed bull. 
didn't want anybody to miss this new entry to the market. And then another of the best Conway Suns, Morning View Choices, a bull again, 1,000 net merit Conway Sun that's over 1,100 on his HHP, beautiful linear again, right casings, his mother's an Alta Altuve, uh, and then a, a, a very good resolve. Traces into the Roxy Cal family again through, through Super Roxy with a slightly different uh, uh, fork of that. And uh, I'll talk about another uh, 100% from the same family here in a second. But Mastitis Resistance Pro, a bull that's been very, very popular, love is linear, choices is a, is a great choice to make. But if you want it in the red, the same maternal line in the red program, 7, 8, 16, 5, 23, Trentway, McLovin, red, same cow family, same maternal line. Mothers are full sisters. The difference is, is this Altuve is 87. She's pictured there. This cow is going to be a high scoring cow someday. And then that resolve and then back through the mogul and then into Super Roxy. One of the highest Red Bulls of the breed again at 28.90, two on type, two on udders. What we've come to expect from Trent Way. And then on top of it, great mastitis resistance as well, the right cap uh, casing. But again, a bull that is really, really uh, quite something. So with that, Rick, you got the, the there was a question on a bull there. Uh, why don't we take a couple of questions before I finish and showcase? Yeah, so we did have a question on 7H15496 Orbit. Uh, the bull that is in the program, he's uh, a challenger son from an 87-point medley. Uh, really nice, solid, all-around uh, proof on the bull. I, I don't have all of the details here as far as semen and availability, as far as what markets he's eligible for. Um, but a bullet did have a nice solid day. Um, 1.8 on udders, one point on type, uh, good mastitis resistance, low somatic cell. Um, so I would say check with your sales representatives to see whether he is available in your particular markets or not, but, a but a solid, uh, nice full pedigree bull, just like the bulls we've been talking about here, uh, this afternoon. Um, and George, you asked a question here about recumbency and, and getting lucky. And uh, I would say that to, right now it's we are so early in the testing process to to say is there any you know patterns i mean the pattern's pretty simple genetically it's pretty simple if you're a carrier you're going to sire carriers and if you're clean you're not so um it's not like one family is going to transmit more of it than the other um thus far I, you know fortunately i i would say we haven't been too surprised with the results that we haven't found some cow family hidden in the weeds where you know, it traces back to Robust and Super Sire. Those bulls aren't that far back in some pedigrees, yet, you know, they can be three, four, five generations back already. So um, I don't think there's any surprises. I, and fortunately, there haven't been too many surprises. Uh, we kind of have gotten lucky, more lucky than not thus far, and that could change, and it probably will change as percentages have a way of averaging out uh, to 50-50 is what we're going to expect to see on this uh, where there are potential carriers. So, um, and quite honestly, we'll know a whole lot more next week as we get more results on calves that have been tested that we just don't simply have the results on to make any kind of analysis or learn much with it yet. And like every recessive, the gene frequency will probably increase in the short term, then it'll work itself down as we screen full brothers and do those kind of things or make decisions on farm. And we're not anywhere near that yet. But obviously, you know, we're excited that that Sheep Sir and Easton and Van Gogh are not carriers since they were three of the heaviest sheep sire fathers that we used last year. But we'll have positive sons of them because we used them on a lot of game day daughters. And, and uh, so some will be clean, some of them won't. You know, we talked about Khan earlier. He's not a carrier. War gear is full brother is. And so that's just how genetic recessives work. And we're going to work through this like everything else. To finish up this afternoon, uh, obviously, Showcase is something that uh, is near and dear to not only me. There's a lot of us. We love this side of the program. And, and you know, this first slide here, this we've made this cow a household name with, with Doc, the Reserve All-American, and that front side profile of this cow. But this shot may become the new standard bearer for 2023 of the business end of this cow because this is this cow – Along with Seamer Solstein's Parfex mother, this cow on the screen is on a handful of cows of the most influential cows of the breed, and she's sired by Luster P. 
She just went very good 89 as a two-year-old. She's a second generation 89.2 year old because she's a sister to Hannon's out of the dock and then the Monterey and then Hanker. You can read all about it in Holstein International because there was just an article about this family, but it's even better news in that family because when I pulled this out of the sire directory and, and again, want to encourage you, uh, the sire directory is online already. So if there's bulls we didn't talk about today, you have that opportunity. But when you have a cow that already has six sons in the sire directory, and these are three of them, and I'm going to talk about two of them, and then some of her highest sons are still on farm, uh, this is going to be an immensely influential cow to add the pull gene. And when we can use Rick's high uh, Chu P son on these descendants and make homozygous pulled. I think we're on the cusp of doing something really, really special. And then to do it in showcase is even more important. But the two bulls I wanted to talk about, I don't know if there's a more exciting young sire out there in the industry today than 258, 16, 498, Wolf Hulu. He's a son of this 89.2 year old. He's one of the top 50 red factor genomic young sires in the breed at 29, 22. He's almost a point higher on type than any other bull that's out there. He's right tight to four points on type, 3.26. He's 11 on confirmation in Canada. He's A2, A2. He's BB. And oh, by the way, he's red factor. So the ability that this bull is going to give us to, to move the needle, certainly I think one of the must use bulls in the high type arena. I've been using him as a mating sire through the winter and uh, very, very, very excited about what this bull is going to be able to do with that beautifully pedigreed but looking at a linear that i don't know how i can get much different his full brother is haken p 7816493 he is pulled he is nine on confirmation he is 1400 pounds of milk and plus on dpr and three and a half points on type in a2a2 you talk about some needle moving bulls and showcase this cow and this family and her influence is going to be huge I said in that Holstein International article, people ask, why do you bring in so many H bulls? It's simple. They're that good and they sell. And that's why we continue to go back to the well. Another bull that is different, different cow family, new opportunities, 7861491, Townline Acres, legendary. A young man that started, bought a do doorman daughter at a sale. She went very good. They lost her. She had a doc heifer calf that ended up being very, very special. And she is now excellent 92, max score second calf. The picture in the headlocks I just got from uh, Derek last night. That's her yesterday, standing at the headlocks, a 92-point second caber. This homecoming son, who incidentally, homecoming had a very, very nice day this week. This bull being 347 on tight, plus on DPR, plus on mastitis resistance. But more importantly, look at his calf wellness traits. Very, very good in calf wellness traits. And in the type world, I probably highlight this because you want your calves that you're going to get out and work with to get off the great starts. And that's what this bull can do. The right casings. Stay tuned. He's got another brother that everybody asks about. Looks like he'll be released in June. But we're just waiting to make sure that he knows how to do his job before we're absolutely certain we release his lambda brother. But legendary is available. And I think he's very unique. Lastly, I want to finish with two bulls that to me are very, very special for a multitude of reasons. These are new proven graduates in the showcase lineup. Our industry lost one of the great people that I've ever met a few weeks ago in Michael Heath. He was a mentor. He was a friend. I knew him for over 30 years. And the industry has rallied to his cause and, and for a good reason. And the reason that I finished with these two bulls, because Michael owned part of both of these bulls and had a hand in developing both of these bulls. And the first one I want to bring up is 7H14920, Avant-Garde Unit Select. Michael and Sebastian and Dave Diamond had developed summer. We had the chance to buy this Unix son. Made a lot of heifers. Maybe they didn't go out and win at every one of the, the shows, but now this bull has proven that that mating was magical. 367 daughters in his proof, 84 scored. If you look at Holstein's website and see how many of these daughters are scoring very good as two-year-olds, it's astonishing. He's one of the high type bull, the top 20 bull in the breed for proven type at 2.81, 1.98 in utter composite, a mastitis resistance probe designated bull, and Look at those calf wellness traits again. Does things that are white. And he's nine on confirmation in Canada. And so when you look at a bull like this, these are four daughters. 
all full sisters, all at Trentway, all pictured last Friday. Um, it's really astonishing what the Bulls are doing and, and, and credit to you, Michael, and, and what he was able to do. And lastly, 7H15023, Mr. Affection Analyst Red, again, reserve premier sire at World Air Expo last year in the Heifer Show, only second to Warrior, and now they're cabin. And it's early data, but what we've seen is really encouraging. He's 268 on type. Uh, again, exceptional calf wellness traits. And I remember the day Michael bought that heifer at Milk Source, baby calf, paid a lot. I remember the day I saw the calf on the farm and went to, to Nathan and Jenny's and saw that byway as a young two-year-old. It was immature, but could see that she was going to be a great cow. And then she ended up being 94, and now she's owned by Ernie. But this cow family has done a lot of things right. And uh, it's the apples and one of the great unstoppable bulls. So two new graduates, honor to you, Michael. And uh, so we're really excited about where Showcase sits at the moment. So not sure if we got any more questions, Rick, but if we do, let's get those if, and see what, uh, and if you do have any closing comments. I'm not seeing any additional questions, Kevin. So. We didn't do too bad, only 10 minutes and 30 some seconds over the hour mark. Uh, yeah. I would say let's uh, go enjoy our Good Friday and our Easter weekend with our families and, and uh, go from there. So, happy so Easter, great life. appreciate the opportunity. See you next time. Thank you.